Welcome back to this series where we talk about how to type mathematics efficiently in Word. And the answer is yes, we can create numbered equation efficiently by creating shortcuts like this. So the two main ingredients of how to create this involves two things. Number one, field codes, and number two, auto text and building blocks. Field codes is what allows you to create an auto numbering in the equations, and building blocks and auto text is what allows you to create a shortcut so that every time I hit the shortcut, the equation will pop up as you see the numbers automatically follow. So what you want to do is go to insert fields so under category, go to numbering, scroll down to sequence click OK. It'll insert this number over here, the three most common shortcuts regarding field codes. That's F9, Command F9, and Shift F9. So F9, which is just updating the field codes, Command F9 is how you can use the shortcut to create the field codes without going through inserting in the menu item. And finally, for Shift F9, that's to toggle field codes, which is to see what the field code is. And to toggle back, you can select everything and either Shift F9 or just F9, and it'll toggle right back. Okay, now that you're an expert in field codes, we can go and create our equation. So what you want is an equation environment where it's sent in the middle, but also you need a numbering on the right. As you can see that you can't normally do this because as soon as I type after the equation, it becomes an inline one and it aligns itself to the left. So what we're going to do is use tabs. So let me undo this first. Because tabs are invisible, let me do two tabs as you can see, so it's a little bit hard to follow. So let me click this, which shows all the document features that you can see, any page breaks or any return keys or any tabs. You can follow them along or any spaces you can see it's shown by a dot. You don't have to do this, uh, but if you want to follow along this way easier in the first time, you can feel free to. So this in the middle is where we want our equation and on the next tab is where we want the numbering. So before we put in those, let's first put our tabs in the right place. So what you want to do is to go on the ruler over here and click and hold, don't let go, and now you can drag it. This is called a tab stop. It'll tell you word where your first tab wants to stop, basically. So you see the whole document is 6.5 inches wide in this size. So half of it is actually 3.25 over here. So you can actually let go over here, but I'm actually going to shift it by just a little bit to the left, maybe two units to the left like this, and I'll explain why in a second. Now you see that the first tab, instead of just going as the default half an inch, it actually stops right over here. Let me click on the first tab and scroll up so you can see that it's actually stopping over here. The next tab now ends at the next half inch, which is not what we want. We want it all the way to the right, so we'll do the same thing, click on this and drag it to the right over here. So you see that my first tab goes to the center, the second tab goes to all the way at the end. The next thing we would want to do is we actually want this to be center aligned. So you see by default, this is left aligned. That's shown by the arrow over here. So let me undo. To make this center aligned, all I have to do, you can see it says left tab if I hover above it, is double click and it will bring up all my tab stops over here. So let me click on the tab stop, the one at 3.13, it's over here and to click center. So if I click OK, you can see that now anything I type here would be center aligned. Okay, so let's bring up our equation. You can uh, go menu, uh, insert equation, or as I've shown in the previous video, I have a shortcut set up for that. So now I've made my equation centered over here. In my second one, I actually want this to be right aligned because if I keep typing like this, you see it brings to a second line. Um, I want it to be right justified. So I'll double click on this. You see it's currently telling me the 3.13 is a center tab. So I'll click on this and I want to change that to right. So you see this now goes to the right. And what I want is to create a field code over here. So I'll create brackets first. And in the middle, I can create field code, which is control F9. And I want this to be sequence A. Remember, this is not case sensitive. Okay, so now I can do function F9, update this, and I have my equation set up over here. Just to address two features, if you don't have a ruler over here, all you have to do is go to view and activate ruler. So see if I click this, it hides my ruler. If I go back to view, enable this, now my ruler comes back. If you accidentally clicked an extra tab like this, now you see it will bring the second tab over here and left justified, and this one needs to be in the third tab. So to delete this, you can just click and hold onto this and just drag it away from the bar. You see that it will discard that and bring you back to this. Okay, so now let me turn off the marks, and now you can see you have a nice equation environment over here. So you can copy this, for example, Command C, and uh, let me go down a few lines and then control V or command V and this creates a new equation you can go down command V you can paste down a few equations let me control A or command A highlight the whole document and update the fields like this you see the numbering will automatically update
All right, so this is exciting because in principle, you already have your equation environment. So every time you need, you can just copy one of these and paste it. Of course, this is not the most efficient way to go about because remember, we love keyboard shortcuts. That's what makes things efficient. So what you need is the final ingredient, which is called auto text and building blocks. So let me show you how this works. So I think I still had it copied. So let me paste. Okay, so I got one of these equations first. If you don't know about auto text or building blocks before, you're missing out. This is like another one of those relative hidden features that will really bring your typing experience in Word to a higher level. So let's see how this works. So the basic idea is you can highlight anything you want that you frequently use and then create a building block or auto text and then every time you just hit a keyboard shortcut and it brings up exactly this entire thing. You can actually have a whole chapter as a building block and every time you hit one shortcut the whole chapter will come back out. We don't quite need that level at the moment, we just want to bring up this equation environment. So highlight what you want and go to insert and go to auto text and click auto text. You can do new, but uh, auto text gives you more control. So let's use that over here. So it will bring up this command box. You can see a preview over here, and it will also show you the text that it's already here. This is where you give it a better name than what it's shown here. So let's call it numbered equation or something like that, that you'll want to be able to remember. Let me show you here, there's actually a lot of default ones already. Anything from things like page x of y to even the Pythagoras theorem or the quadratic formula and things like that. As you can see, I've created several custom ones of my own already, numbered equations, and halfway through I realized I actually want more options, so I actually created a lot. As you see, I have equation version 1, version 2, version 3, version 4, like that. We'll go through some of this in the future. For now, let's create one called equation test. Okay, now all you have to do is click add and I have saved that down. So before I create a keyboard shortcut for that, the long way to bring that up is you can actually go and insert auto text like this, click the same thing and now go and select or just type in equation test like that and instead of add, which is what we did before, this time you can click insert. You can also delete ones that are no longer relevant. So you can click insert like this and as you can see, it created a new one. It no longer says five because that was just me copying and pasting the fifth one. It actually automatically creates the right numbering as well. So to make this look better, let me actually select the whole document, update all my field codes, so now you see they're more pleasant. All right, so we're almost there. Now, basically every time you need an equation, you can just go to auto text, insert auto text like this, type in equation, test, select the one that you need, insert, and as you can see, the numberings are automatic and you're pretty much there. The only remaining thing we want is to automate this whole procedure instead of going to the menu and create a shortcut for it. So you go to tools and customize keyboard like that. It'll bring up this option. And in category, you want to scroll down to building blocks over here. And when you click building blocks, basically all your auto text that you have created before are all here, right? So you can go and type equation test, which is what we created, or you can actually find it over here. So you can just type equation. So everything that starts with equation is here. Okay, so as you can see, I've created four before, which is the most common that I used, but we're going to create a shortcut for equation test over here. So as usual, you can see a small description over here. You don't have to pay too much attention for the number five. That will automatically update. And all you need to do is create a keyboard shortcut. So as we talked about, you can create any shortcut you like. For example, you can do command H or something as long as it is unassigned. If you happen to stumble on something that is assigned, for example, edit find, it will tell you so you don't want to override this. But as we talked about in my prefix shortcut video, very soon you're going to run out of keys because there's only a limited number of keys available on the keyboards. So creating prefix shortcuts is a very powerful tool to expand the number of shortcuts you can create. And I already have a video talking about that. If you haven't seen that yet, I'll put the link down below and you can check out more details on how that works. So for now, let's call it command equals. I like to start all my equations with command equal as a prefix and then with a number to tell me which version it is. So just to illustrate, I can do command equal one is my first version, command equal two is my second, command equal three, like that. So those are actually assigned to here already. I don't want to override them. So let me call this command equal five. If you're creating this for the first time, you can call it command equal one or any shortcut that you fancy because I'm not your boss. So <laughs> I'm going to click assign. As you can see now, I've assigned this command equal five to my test and okay. So everything is fully set up now. All I have to do is hit command equal and then five. You can see that will bring up my equation and the numberings are very perfectly numbered as well. To quickly create like four lines of equation, a quick trick is you don't have to let go of the command key. You can just hold on to command and then tap equal five, equal five, equal five, and you can create immediately a lot of lines of equations like that.
to give you a bonus tip as we've talked about copy and paste works as well so you can actually copy the whole lot if you need to repeat this step further down in the document you can actually just paste the whole thing the numbering doesn't seem to work at first when you just copy and paste so all you have to do is command a select the whole document update everything and you see the numberings will automatically update like this all right, so that's it. All that's left for you to do is to try this on your computer. And you can play around with this. You can move the equations around and then update them. It's actually quite fun to play with and see that all the equations will automatically update. Finally, let me show you all the different versions I've created before and also a few personal tips. So my equation version one is actually exactly as the one we created so far. A small tip I like is actually, instead of having a 12 point font over here, as you can see, I like my numbering just a tiny bit smaller. That's just purely aesthetic purpose. So it's up to you how you want it. So let me show you if I put my cursor here and command equal one, equal one, equal one. This is basically what we discussed. So what are the other versions for? So the second version is for sometimes when I have a big equation over here, for example, if I have a whole matrix like this, and then all the equations here will start to get a little cramped together. So I want a little bit of spacing between all these equations. As you can see, the x and the y is sticking pretty close to the one half. And if I have very dense equation, that doesn't look good. So I've created another building block, which allows me to have a little spacing over here. So this is actually very easy to do. All you have to do is command equal one, and that brings up your original equation with no spacing below. So highlight the whole line, and then now you can do command option M, which brings up the paragraph options. If you don't have that shortcut, let me escape from this. What you need is format paragraph over here. I've created a shortcut for that. So you can bring up this paragraph dialog and then go to after. I will change that to six points. So now that have a six point below, keep this highlighted and then create a new building block or auto text for this. So now you can go to insert auto text I actually don't have a shortcut for inserting auto text, or maybe I have, but I rarely use it because auto text is one of those things where after you set it up for the first time, you don't have to constantly bring it up. So I don't need a shortcut for that. And then now you can give this a new name. And this is where I called equation V2 six point below. That gives me a little hint so I can easily remember what that is. So you can create this building block. I'm going to escape out of this and then create a shortcut, which you can go to tools and customize keyboard. Or I have my shortcut for creating shortcuts, command shift one or command exclamation mark, basically. And I can go to building blocks and then find the other auto text that I just created, for example, this one and assign a keyboard shortcut to that. Let me escape out of this. Okay, and I have two more versions. One is left justified, one has an equal sign. I have a few more thoughts and comments on those. So let me explain that in more detail in the next video, and I'll put the link down in the description below. So make sure to check that out. Okay, so this is the end of it. The first time it may take you a little while to get used to it, but afterwards it will be very easy. You can create a lot of equations like that, and you can reorder the equations and see the equation number being screwed up. Command A and then F9 to update everything and see them reordered back in the way they should be. And to be honest, that's actually quite fun to play with. So hope you enjoyed this video and have fun creating these equations. I'll see you in my next video with much more tips on other versions I've created. As usual, if you find this video helpful, please leave a like below and consider subscribing so you can hit the notification bell so you can get even more tips and tricks on typing equations efficiently in Microsoft Word. So as always, until next time, have a great day.